Welcome to the Lutheran Radio Church Service. This broadcast is brought to you on this station every Sunday at this time. Thank you for listening. Good morning. Welcome to the Lutheran Radio Church Service, now in its 87th year of continuous broadcasting, making us one of the oldest weekly radio church services in the entire country. The Lutheran Radio Choir is under the direction of Marie Zelmer. The Lutheran Radio Choir will open with hymn number 120 in Christian worship, What Wondrous Love Is This? just as Pastor Randall Siegel. You know what it's like to get thirsty. Everyone is thirsty sometime. The problem is you get thirsty all over again. Listen to our gospel later where Jesus talks about water that ensures you'll never be thirsty again. Now let us begin our worship. In the name of God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. The Lutheran Radio Choir will sing hymn number 108 in Christian worship, Jesus, Refuge of the Weary. Jesus, Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins to God our Father, asking him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to forgive us. Holy and merciful Father, I confess that I am by nature sinful and that I have disobeyed you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have done what is evil and fail to do what is good. For this, I deserve your punishment, both now and in eternity. But I am truly sorry for my sins, and trusting in my Savior, Jesus Christ, I pray. Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. Lord, Heavenly Father has been merciful to us and has given his only Son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. I invite you to listen to a reading from God's Holy Word, recorded in Romans chapter 4, select verses. What then shall we say that Abraham our forefather discovered in this matter? If in fact Abraham was justified by works, he had something to boast about, but not before God. 
What does the scripture say? Abraham believed God, and it was credited to him as righteousness. Now, when a man works, his wages are not credited to him as a gift, but as an obligation. However, to the man who does not work, but trusts God who justifies the wicked, his faith is credited as righteousness. It was not through the law that Abraham and his offspring received the promise that he would be heir of the world, but through the righteousness that comes by faith. For if those who live by the law are heirs, faith has no value, and the promise is worthless, because the law brings wrath. And where there is no law, there is no transgression. Therefore, the promise comes by faith, so that it may be by grace and may be guaranteed to all Abraham's offspring, not only to those who are of the law, but also to those who are of the same faith of Abraham. He is the father of us all. As it is written, I have made you a father of many nations. He is our father in the sight of God, in whom he believed, the God who gives life to the dead and calls things that are not as though they were. This is God's word. <laughs> Here the gospel of our Lord regard, uh, recorded in John chapter 4, verses 5 through 26. So Jesus came to a town in Samaria called Sychar, near the plot of ground Jacob had given his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there. And Jesus, tired as he was from the journey, sat down by the well. It was about the sixth hour. When a Samaritan woman came to draw water, Jesus said to her, Will you give me a drink? His disciples had gone into the town to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, You are a Jew, and I am a Samaritan woman. How can you ask me for a drink? For Jews do not associate with Samaritans. Jesus answered her, If you knew the gift of God and who it is that asks you for a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. Sir, the woman said, you have nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. Where can you get, get this living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob, who gave us the well and drank from it himself, as did also his sons and his flocks and herds? Jesus answered, Everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again. But whoever drinks the water I give him will never thirst. Indeed, the water I give him will become in him a spring of water, welling up to eternal life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water so that I won't get thirsty and have to keep coming here to draw water. He told her, Go, call your husband, and come back. I have no husband, she replied. Jesus said to her, You are right when you say you have no husband. The fact is, you have had five husbands, <coughs> and the man you now have is not your husband. What you have just said is quite true. Sir, the woman said, I can see that you are a prophet. Our fathers worshipped on this mountain, but you Jews claim that the place where we must worship is in Jerusalem. Jesus declared, Believe me, woman, a time is coming when you will worship the Father neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You Samaritans worship what you do not know, we worship what we do know, for salvation is from the Jews. Yet a time is coming, and has now come, 
when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For they are the kind of worshipers the Father seeks. God is spirit, and his worshipers must worship him in spirit and in truth. The woman said, I know that Messiah called Christ is coming. When he comes, he will explain everything to us. Then Jesus declared, I who speaks to you am he. This is the gospel of our Lord. Now let us join to confess our dear Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Immediately after the choir sings, When I Survey the Wondrous Cross, number 125 in Christian worship, we will hear the sermon. Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and from our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Dear Christian friends, many of us have heard the expression, seeing is believing. It's often used by people who are skeptical. They have to see something for themselves before they will acknowledge that it is true. Sometimes people will even challenge our Christianity by saying, seeing is is believing. There are some people who will not believe something unless you can prove to them that it is true. The struggle that mankind has is that many of the truths of the Bible cannot be proved by human reason. They can only be proved by the Word of God. We trust that Word. Therefore, we trust the promises found in that Word. Even though our minds may not be able to understand everything in the Bible, we trust it. The writer to the Hebrews says, Now faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. For the Christian, the opposite is true of the phrase, Seeing is believing. Believing is seeing. It is only by believing in Jesus that we are able to see the truths of God. It is our faith in Jesus that gives us real life. It is in our faith in Jesus that gives us the strength and the life to live our lives every day. That's the point of the Apostle Paul in our text this morning. Believing is seeing. Believing is real life. Believing is daily life. Believing is real life. In 2013, the average American household had $15,270 in credit card debt. If one would make the minimum payments on that debt, it would take over 100 years to pay it off. That is assuming no more debt would be accumulated during that time. If more debt was accumulated, you may never be able to pay it off. That debt then becomes so overwhelming that people will try just about anything to get out from under that debt. In the chapter before our text, the Apostle Paul reminds us 
of the overwhelming debt that we carry because of sin. He writes, all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Throughout all of the history of the world, people have been trying to get themselves out from under the debt of sin. They will try anything to come up with a payment plan on their own to pay off this debt of sin. We might even fool ourselves into thinking that somehow we can pay off this debt of sin by ourselves. Yet the truth is, we can try all we want, but we will always fall short. In our text, the apostle uses Abraham as an example to make that point. For the Jewish people of Paul's day, Abraham was considered to be the father of God's people. Many people thought that since Abraham was such a great person, he surely had worked his way into heaven. Paul writes, if, in fact, Abraham was justified, he had something to boast about, but not before God. Did Abraham try to follow God's commands? Yes. Was Abraham a devout and pious man? Yes. Did Abraham show compassion and love to others? Yes. Yet, was all these wonderful qualities of Abraham that allowed Abraham to claim heaven? No. Would Abraham live eternally without worry or pain because of all that he did in his daily life here on earth? No. If Abraham's works made him right with God, then he could pat himself on the back, but they didn't. Listen to what the Apostle Paul continues to say. What does Scripture say? Abraham believed God, and it was credited to him as righteousness. It was God who gave Abraham real life. It was God who gave Abraham the faith to believe in him. Paul then uses an illustration to make his point. Now, when a man works, his wages are not credited to him as a gift, but as an obligation. However, to the man who does not work but trusts God, who justifies the wicked, his faith is credited as righteousness. When is something a gift? When is it wages? It's wages when you work for it. It's a gift when we don't. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus, our Lord. We earn death because of our sins, but faith in Jesus is an undeserved gift from God. It is faith that gives us eternal life in heaven. Everything that has to do with our eternal salvation is a gift from God. Over the years, MasterCard has had a series of commercials that show a series of a number of items along with their prices. The last scene will always show something that ends with the price of priceless. The salvation that we have in Christ is priceless. There is no price that we could pay to earn it. Yet, there was a price paid. That price was the blood of Jesus on the cross of Calvary. We have the righteousness that was earned by Jesus credited to our account. God guarantees it. Therefore, the promise comes by faith, so that it may be by grace and may be guaranteed to all Abraham's offspring, not only to those who are of the law, but also to those who are of the faith of Abraham. He is the father of all. As it is written, I have made you a father of many nations. He is our father in the sight of God, in whom he believed, 
the God who gives life to the dead and calls things that are not as though they were. Human guarantees can fail. Some guarantees are worth less than the paper they are written on. But our salvation is absolutely guaranteed. It is guaranteed by the Son of God. The same God who gave real life to Abraham is the same God that gives you and I life. Believing is also part of our daily lives. In the Old Testament, we read about God coming to Abraham to ask him to take a big step. God came to him and, without any warning at it, simply told him to leave his hometown, his relatives, and his own people, and begin to make a journey to an unknown country that God would tell him about later. Then the Lord promised him that as he would go on at this journey, he would bless him and make him great. That took faith on the part of Abraham. Think how hard it is for any one of us to pick up and leave a place where our roots are and to leave behind our family and friends. But Abraham trusted God. He simply did as the Lord had told him. What's even more amazing is that Abraham does this when he is 75 years old. When he arrives at the destination that God had told him, he built an altar there to the Lord. Abraham trusted in God's promises. Those promises gave him life, but he also lived according to those promises every day. He lived by faith, not by fear of the law. For if those who live by the law are heirs, faith has no value and the promise is worthless. If it is possible to be saved by keeping the law, Paul says, then faith is totally useless. There would be no need for God's forgiveness, grace, and mercy. There would be no need for Christ. Paul's point is the exact opposite is true. We need Christ. We need faith in Christ. It is our faith in Christ that saves us. It is faith in Christ that gives us strength to live every day of our lives. This life is full of struggles and challenges. By ourselves, we would not be able to stand up to all the troubles that we face. But we are not alone. Through faith in Jesus, we are God's children. What a wonderful message we have from the Apostle Paul today. Abraham believed God, and it was credited to him as righteousness. Therefore, the promise comes by faith, so that it may be by grace and may be guaranteed to all Abraham's offspring. God doesn't give us magic formulas or step-by-step -step instructions on how to be pious or how to make it to heaven. Rather, he comes to us with a message that tells us how we receive life from God. He shows us what it means to be truly alive. He tells us that we receive real, lasting life with our Heavenly Father, and as a result, satisfying life each and every day by believing in his promises fulfilled in Jesus. May we join together in thanking God for this gracious gift of faith. Amen. We join in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The Lutheran Radio Committee is pleased to offer you a copy of today's sermon. 
If you'd like a free copy, if you'd like a free gift, or if you'd like to keep on hearing us and our messages week after week, please write. And if possible, send us a tax-deductible contribution to the Lutheran Radio Committee, Box 501, 501, Brookfield, Wisconsin, 53008. At this time, I'd like to thank you for listening, for I'm also saying goodbye this morning. I've been doing this over 12 years, and it's time to pass the baton. But I've got a great replacement. In two weeks, you'll hear Pastor Dave Peters talking to you. You have been listening to the Lutheran Radio Church Service, coming from the chapel at Wisconsin Lutheran College. Your liturgist was Pastor Randall Siegel. The Lutheran Radio Choir will close with Christian worship, hymn number 123, Lord Jesus Christ, You Set Us Free. Preceding service was brought to you by the Lutheran Radio Church Service, broadcasting radio church services every Sunday morning since 1928. Please visit our website at www.lutheranrcs.com to hear this service again. You may also request a copy of this morning's sermon. Please pray for this important ministry. This program has always relied heavily on your financial gifts to produce and present these broadcasts. Recently, we've fallen on challenging financial times. Although we've been blessed with your monetary gifts, we need to continue to receive $400 per week from you, our listeners, to allow our ministry to continue. Please prayerfully consider donating any amount the Lord enables you to give to this Christ-centered gospel ministry. Please mail your gift to the Lutheran Radio Church Service, Box 501, Brookfield, Wisconsin, 53008. Thank you for your generous support of the Lutheran Radio Church Service, and may God bless your day.